Our scripture reading this morning comes from the lectionary uh, from the prophet Isaiah, second chapter. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of God. As has been said many times already today, we begin a new year in the church calendar. In the church calendar, it is the first Sunday of Advent. Advent is a season where we remind ourselves of the coming of Christ and get in touch with our own longings, the stirrings deep within us for the coming of God's presence more fully in each of us and in the world. It is a season about remembering and reimagining and seeing what God's dream is for us and for God's world. So over the next four weeks here at ELPC, Pastor Heather and Patrice and myself will be focusing our messages rooted in Isaiah's dreams and visions about the kingdom of God, about the dream and vision of God in his time and in our time. Asking what does this picture that he often paints of the advent, the arrival of the coming of God, have to say for us today? Yesterday, our family went to see Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. If you haven't seen the movie, I highly, highly recommend it. And right before Black Panther played, we saw what? A preview, yes, a preview, as is the case. This was my first movie in a theater after the pandemic kind of state that we've been in. And the preview before the Black Panther was Avatar The Way of Water. And I tell you what, when I saw that preview, I saw the first Avatar and really liked it. When I saw that preview and the special effects and the cinematography, I thought to myself, man, I really want to see that movie and I definitely want to see it on the big screen. These visions and these prophecies that Isaiah gives in the Old Testament and even in the music that we sang this morning, they are like previews. They're like trailers, coming attractions of the dream of God, the dream that God has for God's world. And we, the church, when we hear and see these visions and dreams, we are inspired and encouraged and motivated and even empowered to become and to live into these previews, to these trailers. And in fact, in our reading today, Isaiah says that he saw the word of the Lord. He didn't just hear it in an audible voice, but it was a picture of how the world could be. And perhaps as you sang our songs this morning, our hymns, and as you heard the scriptures, you were able to imagine the dream of God and visualize its coming and wonder out loud and wonder in your spirit, how could this be, this vision, this dream, this hope? And if we are to see the word of God, this requires us to cap, tap into our creativity and our innovation tapping into our hopeful anticipation that God's word is being revealed and enacted even now as I'm speaking, even now as it was just read for us. It is acting in us and through us, not simply words on a page, but dreams and visions appearing, appearing in human form, just as it did in the Christ child. The word becoming flesh and now becoming flesh in us. 
My question is, can we allow the Word to be a light in our darkness, a light to our path? And if we approach God's Word in this way, it can and will and change us and change our world. The scales fall off of our eyes and we're given vision for an alternative reality to what we see all around us. And slowly and surely, these words become enfleshed and enacted in us, in our church, and in the world. This living and active word is enacting in each and every one of us in the same way that the word became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ thousands of years ago. This is what God's word does. It is a coming attraction. It paints a picture of an alternative to reality to what we experience in our day-to-day -day lives. And oh, oh, how we need the word of the Lord to paint a new picture in our time to see this alternative reality. Isaiah, perhaps like you, know, knew that his world was broken, not the way it was supposed to be. Just a few verses earlier in chapter 1, he paints a picture of this brokenness and says, Your country lies desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. And daughter Zion is left like a booth in a vineyard like a shelter in a cucumber field, like a besieged city. Everyone loves a bribe and runs after gifts. They do not defend the orphan, and the widow's cause does not come before them. Sound familiar? Advent is a season where we return to the word of the Lord, where it comes to us afresh and gives us a preview of coming attractions, a new vision of our current reality. Advent is a season that reminds us that our current situation, dark and despairing as it may feel and actually be, is not the only reality at work in the world. It calls us to look backward and to look forward and eagerly hope in the one who has come and is still coming to bring about a new reality in and through God's people on earth as it is in heaven. This future alternative reality that Isaiah saw was a mountaintop, a mountain that was above all mountains, where people streamed to the mountain to receive teaching and guidance and direction. And the teaching and guidance and direction that they saw was about beating swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks and nation not lifting up sword against another nation and not even learning about war anymore. Can you see that vision? Can you imagine it right here and right now in our midst, amidst our time and our circumstances? Can you imagine and see this mountain of God? This is a beautiful and majestic vision of the coming of God's rule and reign. A vision where all people of every race and nation and culture and ethnicity and language are drawn to God and caught up in the flow of God's river of love and justice. Can you imagine this mountain? Can you see this mountain? It is a vision of all people streaming out of a felt desire and a need to be instructed and guided by God. It is a revolutionary vision that runs against the grain of our ordinary complacency and cynicism. It is a vision where fear, the fear of God and the shame of God are removed. It is a vision where we desire to be in God's presence amidst a community with a rich diversity of people, all streaming towards God, desiring to be taught and changed by God. I ask you one more time, can you imagine and can you see this mountain of God? Is it possible to become a reality in our midst? And as we see and stream and dwell in this beloved community of God, God teaches. God speaks. He shows paths that we're called to walk in. And what does God say? What is God's teaching and instruction? What is God's path? Beat your swords into plowshares. Your spears into pruning hooks. Do not lift up a sword against another person 
or a nation against another nation. Don't even learn or study war anymore. Friends, the Advent hope of the coming of God is a life devoted to peace and nonviolence. Can you imagine and see this mountain? Lord, have mercy. I will not labor this morning or trouble your hearts with the statistics of how violent our nation is, how we compare in gun-related deaths to other countries, nor how many guns we have per capita, nor how violent the entire world has become in the 20th and 21st century. Not even mention the venom and vitriol that flows out of our social media feeds. I simply want to invite us to imagine a different world this morning. Like Isaiah, to see the word of the Lord courageously and creatively. Do you have the eyes to imagine an alternative reality to the violence of our world today? Can you tap into your curiosity and wonder and think about what conflict might look like if it were resolved in a nonviolent manner? What would it look like if we took an AK-47 assault rifle or a simple pistol and turned it into farming instruments? Literally. What would need to happen if you in your own life would never lift up a figurative sword against someone else in your thoughts, in your words, and your deeds? What would be required of the church of Jesus Christ to not even be taught about war anymore, to divest of anything that helped perpetuate war in this world? I don't know about you, those questions seem daunting and almost impossible, like an angel appearing in church. But friends, this is the dream and vision of God. It, was not, it is not only the dream and vision of God, it is the dream and vision of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who once said that he had been where? To the mountaintop. Thank you. He had been to the mountain in a literal dream the night before he died. And he said he looked over the mountain and he had seen into the promised land and he had seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He saw an alternative reality that he spent his entire life trying to create. And if you wanted to participate in the vision of the beloved community that Dr. King was seeking to create, you had to commit to a life of nonviolence. One of the tenets of the movement, the rule of life that you had to sign on to, said this, I agree to refrain from violence of fist and tongue and heart. I agree to refrain from violence of fist and tongue and heart. Friends, we need courage and creativity to imagine our homes, our churches, our schools, our businesses, our governments, our nation, and our world where we have the interior fortitude and imagination to refrain from violence of fist and tongue and heart. Amen? Imagining this nonviolent alternative, this peaceful way of living, this Advent vision of the coming of the Christ requires one simple word, wonder. It requires us to wonder. And I borrow this simple and profound word, wonder, from my new heroine in my current life, a woman named Valerie Kaur. Valerie Kaur is an American sick activist, documentary, documentary filmmaker, lawyer, educator, and faith leader. And for the last 10 weeks, 15 or 20 of us at ELPC have been making our way through her book, See No Stranger, a memoir and manifesto of revolutionary love. 
and Valerie contends that the practice of wonder is to, quote, look upon the face of anyone and choose to say, you are a part of me I do not yet know. You are a part of me, Wayne, I do not yet know. You are a part of me, Linda, I do not yet know. And when we do this, Valerie says, it cultivates a sense of awe and openness to others, thoughts and experiences, their thoughts and experiences, their pain and their wants and needs. Wonder, she says, is where love begins, but the failure to wonder is the beginning of violence. The failure to wonder is the beginning of violence. And Valerie speaks of this practice of choosing to wonder, choosing to say to another, you are a part of me that I do not yet know, to practice it particularly with those who oppose us, those who are different from us. And she uses that word opponent very intentionally. She says when we use the word enemy, that is a permanent state of being. But an opponent is one who can change us and we can change our orientation to them. Wonder stirs up in us the interior fortitude and imagination to be curious about others, to be curious about our opponents. Wonder empowers us to refrain from violence of fist, tongue, and heart. Wonder is a posture of nonviolence. Wonder is enabled to imagine a world where we can beat swords into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks and don't even lift up swords against another person and we don't even want to learn about war anymore. Are you with me this morning? Are you with me in this Advent season? I wonder what it would be like to wonder more. And I wonder how wonder could create a more peaceful reality in our being. And I wonder how wonder, as it creates a more peaceful reality in our being, creates more peaceful workplaces, more peaceful schools, more peaceful churches more peaceful nations and governments. I wonder what would happen if every person in this beautiful sanctuary this morning began to act as if the vision that Isaiah gave, the vision that Dr. King gave, the vision that Valerie Kaur gave were actually possible to radically transform the world. I wonder what kind of revolutionary incarnation of God would begin to break out into the world slowly and steadily if we simply said to everyone we met, and especially those people who annoy us, you are a part of me I do not yet know. You are a part of me I do not yet know. Perhaps people might begin to stream to the mountain of God. I wonder. I wonder. In this season of Advent, let us wonder together. May it be so.